flax seeds have just been catching a lot of flack lately. Like they're getting picked on, they're in jail. They're just like in this prison cell and everyone's saying, nope, flax is a no-go. And one of the most common things that people are saying about flax right now, which by the way is totally like legitimate to look at, is that it increases our estrogen levels. Now, the science behind that isn't exactly in line with that. The theory with that makes perfect sense. So we'll kind of address the theory and then I'll break down some more of the research, especially the research is starting to come out. And then we'll look at a little bit more of just kind of the big picture stuff we have to look at. Um, so let's go ahead and let's jump in with this. It's gonna be interesting. So flax, once it's sort of metabolized a little bit, it ends up having this compound, which we'll talk about in a second, that looks a lot like estrogen, which means that it can bind to an estrogen receptor. Now, in this world, we look at things called estrogen mimickers, BPAs, things like that, that are inherently known to potentially drive up estrogen levels. So we try to avoid them. Well, when something binds to an estrogen receptor, it doesn't necessarily constitute an increase in estrogen. Okay, sometimes it does, but sometimes it can actually act as a blockade. Okay, so let's look at some of this research. So there's an interesting study that was published in the Frontiers Nutrition. Okay, now what's interesting about this is they found that flax could potentially blunt the growth of breast cancer. Now, what does this have to do with anything? I don't want to go down a cancer rabbit hole. That's not what this channel is about. And I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to pretend to be one. But what this implies is that, well, breast cancers generally grow from estrogen. Like when estrogen levels are higher, it usually causes a spike in that. Not always, but generally. Well, if we first have this like first response to this where we can say, okay, well, if it was driving up estrogen levels, we would probably see some pretty aggressive increase there. So what the heck is going on? Well, then we look at the mechanism. So flax contains a lignin known as seco isoleric iresinol. Long word, we'll just call it SDG because that's the acronym for it. Okay, this SDG is very important in this conversation. SDG, when it gets into our gut, gets converted into something called enterolactone. Now, it also gets converted into something called enterodiol, but I think enterolactone is probably more important. Okay, it is these compounds that are very molecularly similar to estrogen. And this is where the confusion starts. Okay, enterolactone kind of looks like estrogen. Is it going to cause this whole issue? Well, when you look at the research in this particular study, found that, okay, this is where the enterolactone actually goes in and binds to the estrogen receptor. And it was creating a blockade on that receptor so that estrogen that was floating around through the body wasn't able to actually get its signal all the way. It wasn't able to send its signal because the estrogen receptor was being blocked. So it's blocking the effect of estrogen on the receptor because it's sitting there in the receptor occupying. It's pretty interesting. So in the case of the breast cancer with this study, basically it wasn't able to react to the estrogen signal because the signal wasn't able to get there. So that's pretty fascinating. That's how we look at that. But now I want to open your eyes and expand a little bit more. We have this thing called the estrobolone. Okay, it's a fancy word, but it essentially is telling us in kind of in a colloquial way that the gut assists in the metabolization and the removal of excess or non-utilized estrogens. We have multiple forms of estrogen. The worst form is one called 1,7-hydroxyestradiol. That's the, really the one that's researched a lot as the bad one. Now, when we have a diverse microbiome, the microbiome can help break down and improve the waste process, the removal process of certain estrogens. So our gut microbiome plays such a huge role with that. Now, where does flax come in? Flax being exceptionally high in soluble fiber, especially a fiber called arabinoxalans, these fibers are very powerful when it comes down to producing short chain fatty acids. So they're very beneficial when it comes down to just overall gut microbiome diversity. Okay, and that gut microbiome diversity, although we can't say definitively which bacteria 100% are metabolizing estrogen, we can say that a more diverse microbiome plays a better role because we have a better chance of containing the bacteria that do metabolize estrogen within our gut. Would you rather have 10 species or a million species? That way you have more diversity and you know that, okay, at least I know some of the work is getting done. So having this gut diversity becomes very important. People do ask all the time, do probiotics make a difference when it comes down to the microbiome, estrobilome, all this stuff? 
The bottom line is that diversity is important and probiotics may help contribute to that diversity. So I generally take one that is called a Synbiotic. I use uh, one from a company called Seed. It's a prebiotic and a probiotic. If you look at the capsule, there's a capsule inside of a capsule. So very unique technology where it's kind of this uh, different staging. It's really fascinating. Anyhow, they're doing a bunch of research in the world of microbiome. And if you've noticed on this channel this year, I've done a lot of microbiome content is because I've partnered up and doing a lot of research with them. They're also a huge sponsor on this channel. And because because of that, there is a 15% off discount link down below in the description. Okay, so if you're thinking about the microbiome, you're thinking about diversity, it might be something worth looking at. Plus, it's kind of nice to get a 15% off discount link. So use that code down below and check out Seed. And a big thank you to Seed for the continued support on this channel. But we also have to look at the relationship between short chain fatty acids and testosterone. There's even some research that demonstrates that when we have a more diverse microbiome, there is a positive correlation with increases in testosterone. Okay, if we have lower levels of testosterone, then the estrogen testosterone balance is out of whack. So the bottom line here is I think that flax has been getting a little bit of a bad rap without looking at the entire big picture. Obviously, the isolated research, of course, with you know, the estrogen receptor, but then the bigger kind of just overarching theme here is the microbiome diversity that you are gaining from the flax is probably outweighing the potential negative estrogen impact, but I don't even think it's actually a negative impact now. So at the end of the day, eat flax. There are benefits to it. I eat a lot of it, okay? I have at least a couple tablespoons per day, and I recommend that you add that in too. Okay, soluble fiber, a little bit of insoluble fiber, appetite suppression, of course, fiber helping you go to the bathroom, which is always a good thing, but then all these other benefits with short chain fatty acids, estrogen metabolism, and if you're not having to worry about estrogen, it's just worth adding in. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.